um, we need to go um, to the um, OTP. I already mentioned you um, that we are using um, OTP as a backend. So where is that working or how it works? Um, at the beginning, you see the, um, there are two endpoints. The, the, first, the first endpoint is the routing part and the second endpoint is the for for the show boost list, maybe we could start with the with the GraphQL part because that's the the most simplest part. If we uh, this this endpoint is is used for the list boost, right? So for for this screen. So if we see the the fetch what we are doing, maybe I can just refresh. Mm. It's, yeah, I think that is. Mm, yeah, it's not really visible. Maybe we are using the the cache. Sorry. So if we go to that screen, we can see how it's working. So that's part of the transport lead list. Um, since we know and um, each screen should be responsible or contain everything what each screen needs. So that's the reason why we have the service um, folder here. Inside the servers, you can see the whole models, what you what, what we have here. Um, regarding to the, um, to the list of buses, what we need about the buses is the name, is the code, the root and the geometry, it means the, the list of um, of the latitude and longitude point, and also the stops. So that's and that's the the, the model. Since we are using uh, GraphQL for for it, we um, we are using these models for it. We just need to convert to response of the GraphQL to some model or some instance what we can use inside the for application. So. I'm not sure if you're already familiarized with um, GraphQL, but this one is the request of the of the GraphQL what we are using. The, the first one is um, forget whole whole list all 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 list of buses, and the and the second one is forget the details for when you click on each bus. Okay. And so, and also you have a service here. Uh, what is uh, the um, transport service? What the qubit are using? The first one is um, the fetch patterns. It means fetch the list of buses. So it and that's an ASIC function, and it will re return you a list of pattern OTP. If we open to the pattern OTP, we can see uh, that's the, this one, you know. So that's the object what what, what we can manage easily. Uh, is someone talking? Or maybe you can just. Hi, Soren. Hi. Sorry, I, I, I will just mute you. <laughs> Okay, um, so let's continue. Uh, so this first function will request using the this this query, okay, and will return the list of the buses what and what we will use inside the each screen, and also this other other function too. And if if you want to know more about the GraphQL, you can just you know, find in the documentation. The documentation of the GraphQL is pretty well. And also the library, what we are using for consume GraphQL services is just Grab and GraphQL. If we if you go to the page from the PubDev, you can see it here. And this one is the client of GraphQL. What you uh, what we are using. So as you can see, uh, the the query is already here, and you can see a lot of example how it works. 
so um um samuel we have a question in the chat okay it says by using graphql does it mean that the routes are in a database what kind um I, as I mentioned, uh, we are using uh, OTP without any changes there. So it means we don't have uh, any database there. We are just using the the OTP database. Maybe they are using, I don't know, Postgres or wherever they can have. So we are we are consuming that that that, and that information. So if you want to know um, about more the GraphQL or I mean the the GraphQL of of that uh, server. You can use any client what you prefer. Um, GraphQL client on I guess yeah maybe this one. To yeah okay and here you can see all information what you can fetch but for your question which database we are using i have no idea sorry <laughs> we are using otp as backend for it maybe we need to read about more otp then we can know the information okay so so graphql is to query otp is that correct yes okay cool uh, there's another question here. It says, can I run demo the app web with just a few routes and add the rest of the routes later on? Uh, could you repeat the question? Sure. It says, can I run or demo the app web with just a few routes and then add the rest of the route later on? Uh, what do you mean with routes? You mean the trans public transport routes or the screen yeah. routes that's a good question rexa do you want to unmute and just clarify your question really quick mm, i think if the public transportation routes yeah yeah uh it is more about your 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 backend and is that the the information is it's not uh, mandatory for the front end. If your backend is is empty, the application will will continue working, but you will not see any routes there. So I think that if you want to mount your own Trophy version for your CD, and if you only have one route or two routes, that and and that and that's enough. You only need to mount your your OTP. We we also have a different. Um, tools on on our um repositories so you can try to mount yourself or maybe you can you could ask later to uh, about the the um, but, auto by the way here i am the backend expert so if anything about data um how um because um trophy core uh, or trophy app is just a client application so what it does it's just uh requesting, demanding the backend, the different services we have for data. So everything what is with data uh, is uh, has to do with the backend. So it's not uh, that uh, the scope um, of this uh, meeting, maybe I should do also a separate meeting about the backend side to So you can uh, connect all the dots. It sounds mm -hmm. great, Brian. We can set it up. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for for this meeting, um, we expect that some backend is already running. Okay. So um, here, um, if if you want to to, to try, um, there are a lot of tools where in, what you can use for try the GraphQL here. That's the information what we are using. As you can see here is the ID, the name, the code, the root, and 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 other things. Here you can see the same things there. So that was for the part of, of, of roots. Um, so now going more to the gap, and I, I mean to the 
um, uh, to the transport list screen. Yeah, um, that's uh, really simple how how it's working. The important thing here, or uh, the new feature, what we are already using about the latest uh, Flutter nav nav navigation is when you press uh, when, when you press on on each uh, on one of that one, as you can see, the 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 top URL has been changed. Okay, so that's really um, really a nice feature for for Flutter because that's how the website works usually. So if you copy in the link and if you share with someone that link, it will open the application at the exactly position what you are sh sharing. That wasn't possible before. Uh, that's the reason why we are using Rootmaster and that's easily to, to implement it. So as you can see here, we are just building the, the current route uh, with um, encoding the the boost ID and just pushing the to the root master. So if if you want to navigate on the different screens uh, inside your screen, you should use the root master of contest and and push something here. I know this also possible to use uh, the na the na navigator and then you can push or or, or pull. Um, any screen, that's not the the good way to do that because it will break the root master behavior. So that's something what we need to to care about it. Okay. Um, so now going to the root transport qubit, we can see here and we just have the three states. The first thing is the transport. That's basically the list of the of the buses. Then here you can see um, we are just saving and and also we are saving all current state using um, JSON files for for it. Um, maybe I can show you quickly where is that. Well, I think that we are not saving here, but uh, you can see an, another, for example, on theming, maybe I, I didn't show you before, but here um, you are, uh, we are saving the current status uh, of the current of the current state. Since the application, um, since the, the current theme is also an, an object we can save it and then we can save the current state when the application is re reloaded again we can reload the data what we have here you can see how we are saving we are using the box we are using um hype i'm not sure if you already fam familiarized with that but that's uh, not really complicated what you can do if you want to to implement the persistence data on on your own qubit, you can just see how it's working on on the theming qubit. Then you can implement it. So going back here, it seems um, that's not yet uh, implemented the persistence, but I think that it doesn't make sense to to say to implement persistence for this screen because uh, if some bus is changes on the back end you you will not see it here so and also it's not too too heavy to just download again and and download every time when you open the app mm, and this part is just only for sorting by by name by by, by short name and that's it how it works this qubit is is really simple as you can see, uh, it's just saving the current status. There's no more complex be be behavior here. And, and that's it about the, the transport list. So now we can go to the, to the most important uh, screen and also the most complicated screen, which is the home screen. And the home screen, um, 
as you can see, uh, the home screen is using the OTP endpoint. Here, um, we are not using GraphQL because the latest version of, of the GraphQL is um, uh, 2.0, and but uh, they can't uh, support our, the transport or the public transport or, or our cities. So that's the reason why we are using the old queries for fetching the, the, the OTP endpoint. This endpoint is, all, is an, an OTP instance what is already working here. Is if you open it, you can see the, the endpoint, right? So you can you can fetch something here, and you will get the the response. So as you can see here, we uh, you have some requests here, and this request is what we are using for the home screen. The good thing here is you can also reuse the models what we have. Here you can see the the itinerary. And the itinerary is um, all is basically the the model what what the OTP is using on the backend. Doesn't matter if you are using uh, GraphQL as the as the request or you are using typical fetch. And here um, I think that it's not needed to make uh, any changes here. Or, or only if the um, OTP um, make some changes there. So here you can see a lot of of models with a lot of information of root. Um, for for getting more clear, you can see here a lot of uh, response, I mean, a lot of data, sorry, not response, a lot of data. Um, in Flutter, we cannot use the directly the JSONs. We need to convert the JSONs into um, some object what you can use. We need to create an instance uh, from some for some classes what we have or some models what we have and that's basically what uh, what it's it um, is doing so and in otp the first thing what you can see or the first part is the plan okay so this is the, the this one is the i mean the root model and the root model is basically the, the plan. Inside the plant, you can see the the itineraries. So if we go back to the to, to the plan, here uh, the the only important uh, response what what we use of the OTP is just the plan. Inside the plan, you can see the the date. You can see the the from data the, or the requests what you did. And also the two, but they are not really important for us because you already know what uh, what what you request. What is important for us is the itineraries. As you can see, there are three itineraries. That basically the three type of three, or three options what you have to take some some route. So here you can see there are a lot of informations, and that's what we are converting into the instance of our models. So here you can see is the plan inside the plan is there is an itinerary and the itinerary is basically um, an object of that parameters and also you should be able to see it inside the in the itinerary as you can see here that's also what they are here and also um, as I as as I told you um, we are using just as a model, there is no real behavior inside here because they are just models. So also you can see the parser. We are converting um, from JSON to some object to to this type of to the an instance of that object. That's what we are doing here. Um, so ideally, it's more complex. Um, even I don't really know how exactly it. It works um, be, be, because we work as team, you know. So, um, if you want to to see more how it works, uh, how they are converting, so you can see more in details. But um, basically, they are just repeating each um, flow or each type of converting 
all models should have two JSON. All models should have from JSON. So if we just compare it, we can go to places. Here you can see two JSON, and also you can see from JSON. And also we are using the factory, you know. So that's how it works. That's all. That's only for the modeling part. Now the the question is, where is the service? The service you can see here. Uh, we need the fetch advanced plan. Uh, here you can see the implementation of that request. So here you have you have a fetch plan. What is uh, what receive the list of transport modes and also from in 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 two. As you can see here on the, on the payload, what we are sending to the to the OTP server is two points on the map, and also the mode. What you want to the the answer. Right now we are sending the transit and work, and also the some point on on the map, right? And that's the same thing what we need here. We need the from, we need two, and also the list of transport modes. The transport mode is already. Um, Model it here is is already available for us, so you can just um, select which one you want to use. But for our purpose, we are just using the bus. Um, I don't know which one we are using, but um, that's already the all possible types of mode is already modeled. So is is not needed to guess in or go into documentation what is missing or what I can use. All of them are the type of routes what you can use on the um, for the OTP server. So if we go back here, um, also we are using the um, some extra um, parameters for the um, for the request. For example, if we want to num of itineraries, we just put five. And also, uh, if we want to implement that, like uh, you can. If you want to go to settings, then you can select how many results you want to see. That also could be possible, right? So we only need to to convert this constant into a variable. So that's the the idea here. So this service is really simple. It's, it's just uh, forming all all values what we need, then just fetching. And the response could be a, a plan. And the plan is the most important object what we use on each um, screens. And also here on exceptions, you have a different exceptions about the types of error what we can get from the OTP uh, response. And somewhere, so somewhere here, we are in translation, I guess. I'm not sure where. Yeah, maybe that's not yet. Um, yeah, okay. And now that was only for the for the service for the request. So now going back to the screen, we have here um, the main screen. We are using a scaffold. We are using a drawer. So if if we go to the application, you can see that we have an scaffold, we have a drawer here, and also you should able to see somewhere where's the map and also where's this, this part, right? So that's basically what is here. We are we are using uh, this custom scrollable container, what is a, a custom widget for for manage this behavior. Okay. So it means inside here is a, should be a map and also should be the current itinerary. So here, as you can see, if there is a plan in the main state, if we go a little bit to the map root qubit, if, and if we go to the state, you can see we have different states here. Um, we have from and to and the current plan and the selected itinerary. This is the the whole state what we need for this screen. We have the plan, basically is the is the list of the of the itineraries, right? And also we need the the from place and also the destination place. And the last thing what we need as a state is the current 
it, uh, itinerary what we select when you press on it each time the current state is is basically changed so that's why we need that so going back to the screen to the home screen um that's what we are listening to uh, we are listening to the current state. I'm not sure if we are already familiarized with the block pattern, but if, here you can see we are we are watch the did qubit. So wherever there is some any change inside this qubit, this piece of code we will re-render it. So so that's how it works. And here you can see uh, if there is a plan. We are we are showing something here. If there is no plan, we are just um, showing nothing there. So that's how how it works on the on the bottom side. 